G'day guys, Mac with the Outer Circle, and today we're going to look at the Header Knights of Slanesh. Now, they've released, I think, pretty much all of the different mortal units that they're going to release. Um, I've spoken about a few of them before, and all the ones I haven't spoken about, I'm going to cover off in this episode. So, it's just a little bit of a quick catch-up, because a few people have been asking me for my opinion. Now, why this is probably relevant is I did a video called What Broke the Fans Slanesh, Mm, a year or two back now and in that video I pointed out a few key things that I felt they could do or fix or change however you want to put it to the way they represented the god on the tabletop in order to actually do something with the god that wasn't just sex drugs and rock and roll which is essentially the direction they've been going in for the last 20 years now it seems they got the message because a lot of the things I asked for they did deliver but, did they deliver it how I wanted them to? Well, today we're going to have a look and find out. So first off is a model that's already out, and that is this guy from the Shadow and Pain box set. Who immediately makes me think with his little arseless chaps here, of Mad Max 2, the Road Warrior. It just, Vernon Wells immediately comes to mind. Um, anyway, uh, do I like the model... I don't hate it. I'm actually a lot more lukewarm on it than most people would think. I'm not a huge fan of the arms and weapon posing. Just something feels a little bit disjointed about it, not in the good kind of unsettling way. I think it would probably work best for me personally if there was some real soft conversion maybe done here. Perhaps having the left hand holding onto the long pole arm and just resting it on the base and maybe turning that right hand into say a claw crab claw could be pretty cool uh, or maybe a shield maybe even some sort of other slanishy blade but as it is not entirely what i want to see in a character but by no means am i saying it's a bad character uh, quite the opposite i think it's a very nice character and well done just doesn't suit my own personal taste uh, completely. I mean, it's like 95% of the way there. We're nitpicking, really. And that's okay. That's what these videos are about. They're very subjective. Anyway, moving away from that, let's look at some of the other header knights that were shown off. So we have here these interesting uh, Slick Blade Seekers. So instead of the old Marauder uh, Slanesh Seeker Riders, we get these guys. And... I think it's very interesting. They've got sort of a pseudo-Arabic Persian thing going on here. Um, these look like a bunch of extras from Mad Max ended up in the world of Aladdin. Is the only way I can put it. Uh, and, I, and it's good. It works. The only thing that's a bit odd is um, the paint jobs. Uh, specifically the eyes on the fiends or steeds of uh, Slanesh, I should say. They almost look like they've got a smile on their face and a happy eye instead of it being like a black soulless pit. Uh, but that's not the fault of the models in any way, it's just the way it's sculpted. It's fine. Um, it's also very strange that the animals have so many piercings when they are animals. Like, how did they communicate to the owners they wanted to have some sweet piercings uh, and some scarification? I know, just, just something that pops out to me. Like... Fair enough that the mortal followers would adorn themselves, but that their beasts of burden would somehow want nipple piercings, just a little bit odd to me. Also odd that they decided to cover the underside of the belly of these things with a armoured breastplate, yet they have this massive long neck that protrudes well out in front and is incredibly exposed. Um, just sheerly impractical. I think for me personally, uh, we'll see if it's a sculpting option um, like when you assemble it, if we can get around it. But I'd just prefer a bare chest on them, to be honest. Um, no armor at all on the fiends. If they're a demonic beast of burden, then do they really need the armor? I don't think so. But yeah, overall, I really like them. Um, and I really like the helmets on these guys. The heads are much, much better on these guys than the previously shown header knights in the earlier Warhammer community articles. The uh, Exalted Infantry, those guys are... Um, especially the, the Twin Souls, those guys are pretty craptacular. 
facially, anyway. Uh, we also get the Bliss Barb Seekers. So, Seekers uh, is the theme word that they keep carrying over. Seekers of Slanish. Seeker, Seeker, Seeker. It's on all these units. Bliss Barb obviously referring to the fact that this is a Cavalry Archer unit. Which, you know, makes sense. Uh, step Nomads are known for coming from that sort of Persian region. I think the Persians themselves, uh, back in the ancient times, when they took on the Medes and that, were a set of sort of uh, step horse archers, nomadic horse tribes. So it kind of looks back to that, and um, I like it. Although the more I look at this uh, particular steed with the way that, again, they've painted the eye, it looks like it's got a big blue eye, like Disney eyes. And I keep thinking of like a friendly seahorse or something. <laughs> Nothing to do with the model at all. It's just the paint job. Just just the paint job. And and I just keep going, what the frick's going on there? Um, it's interesting that they chose to expand the Slanish cavalry arm when I really do think it's infantry uh, on the whole that needed expansion because you already got fiends. You already had the uh, original Seekers, um, the Mounted Demon Ants. You had the, uh, is it Hellstriders or something like that? The, uh, like Chaos Marauders riding steeds. And then they've added two more. So that takes us up to like a good four or five cavalry units at least for Slanesh. When, what have they got for infantry? Demonettes? Just Demonettes? I mean, they're releasing two infantry units, I suppose. And they also seem to be releasing the Slungors. Probably the only criticism I could draw for these guys is that they look like they're too big for their bases. Then maybe they could have been scaled down a little bit in CAD, you know, to 85-90% of their current scale, or maybe give them a slightly larger base for them to fit on a bit better. Just Age of Sigma loves these big sprawling poses that hang out all over the bases, which is fine. Just, if you're going to do that, maybe make the base a little bit bigger. And I, I say this because of a person who constantly travels around the country with his miniatures. There is nothing worse than trying to put models into a figure case whose bases are a much smaller diameter than the arms. I'd say here that a great example is, uh, as you see on screen, the entire crab core from the elbow onwards is all hanging out over the base, as is the entire axe. If I was to put this into a foam case, I'm probably going to start tearing up the foam with the weapons, getting it snagged in the case, tearing uh, up the case, possibly flaking the paint off of the miniature, or the core tips, which look very fine, or the axe head, which is also quite fine, are going to get caught and snap off. Now, you can be careful, but we all know it happens, okay? And this is just, this is the practicality of things. We all love our models, and we all transport them from time to time, and this is something you've got to be aware of when you buy a miniature range. And so for me, I find that I like to hold the models by the base. The base is what's doing the work in most of my figure cases, and I try and leave the arms uh, without any pressure on them. So that when I'm transporting the miniature, the base is doing all the work, therefore the model can't get damaged. That's the theory, of course, not always how reality works out. And with a model like this, which is sprawling off the base, it's going to be a pain in the ass to transport. Now, there are solutions like the A case and that, where you can magnetize all the bases and clamp them into that. But still, it's a—it's not something that the average person is going to do, when, especially when they get into this hobby for the first time and they're looking to buy miniatures and build up their collection and they need to buy paints and all the hobby materials. A case is really far down the list of their priorities, and especially because cases aren't cheap. So, I don't know, just a minor thing, but it's actually more major than you think. As for the models themselves, they're gorgeous. These are everything I actually want in Slangors. Just the creepy, gangly proportions of them. Um, I'm not so worried about the black uh, latex uh, leggings. They're fine. Um, the heads on them are fine. In fact, I think these would make some really cool possessed in a Mordheim warband. Something like that. Mm, you have a lot of fun with this. I do hope there's more than uh, three of them, though. Because, yeah. I feel like it'd be nice to run a lot of them. But, I mean, what? We now have Demonettes. These guys... Chaos Warriors. Like, standard Chaos Warriors. And the two new uh, Head of Night Foot Chosen units. The Twin Souls and the other one. 
it's not really a lot of infantry for Slanesh, which is, I think, where they're lacking when you compare them to the other Chaos uh, types. I mean, there might be more, but part of why I left this was because I thought there would be more, and they haven't released anything, so it seems like this is it. And judging by the language they use in this, that there was one last thing to show us, I'd say this is probably all the releases for Slanesh we're getting for a while. Unless they do something at 40k. So yeah, uh, Gluttus or Scolian, the Lord of Gluttony. Well, I approve of the Gluttony theme. Uh, it was something I heavily suggested in that What Broke the Fans video. I don't approve of that name. It is terrible and the person who came up with it needs to be shot. Or maybe put under an obese man and suffocated to death. Because that name is terrible. Why can't the guy have a normal name? Why don't you give him some interesting Persian name? Do a play on Xerxes or something. Xeraxis. Something like that, you know? Xeraxis, Lord of Gluttony. There's a catchy name. Thanks, Games Workshop. I'm in town all week. You can pay me then. Do I like it? Uh, yes, I like the themes, and it's doing a lot of what I said to do. A uh, big fat guy in a planet one with a sort of harem feel going on works. What doesn't work for me? Well, there's a couple things. First of all, he is a weirdo. And I mean that in the nicest possible way. But look at him. The whole point I had was a big fat guy who thinks that he's beautiful when really he's just a big fat guy. That's what the model worshippers of Slanesh are. They're normal looking people who have this secret sordid background life that they don't want people to know about. This guy is obviously being mutated or have a demonic presence of some kind because he's got big purple tentacles coming out everywhere and horns all over his head. Not to mention that giant grey tongue. Think of the movie 300. If you've seen it, you'd know there's a scene where um, the Spartan trader goes into Xerxes' camp and he goes into Xerxes' harem. And you notice that Xerxes isn't the weird one. Yeah, sure, he's got piercings and shit, but everything else happening in there is weird. There's a fucking, like a minotaur, there's a person with like a goat's head, um, or a satyr of some kind, I suppose you could call that. Uh, there's a whole bunch of like mutated women, amputees, all sorts of stuff. Xerxes is, apart from the jewellery, a perfectly normal guy in that harem. That's the sort of thing I think needed representing here. You don't need the harem leader, this glutton guy, to be the, the weird one. He needed to be the straight man. He needed to be the one who is running the harem and is secretly behind the scenes the Slaneshi worshipper. Not so openly and proudly exhibiting the signs of the decadence. And his followers on the Planequin are by far the tame ones. So it's ass about face in my opinion. With the Osiarch Bone Lords, there's Catacross's base. And on that he has these interesting generals. And you look at them and you think, geez, one of those guys is the sort of general I actually want for this army on foot. And I think that with this, this guy on the left here, that would make a great general all of his own. Same with the uh, person on the right there with the sort of peacock feather headdress behind her. She would look great as a sorceress on foot. I mean, that's what this release is really missing. It's missing a, a sorcerer or sorceress in that Arabic theme. That would really go well. Instead, we've got this big guy, which is, this is a big centerpiece focal named character. But you've already got a centerpiece focal named character. It's either Shalaxi Hexbane or it's Sigvald the Magnificent. Take your pick of those two. One's a greater demon of Slanesh, and the other one's, well, Fulgrim in fantasy, I guess. So where does this guy fit into the picture? He's the sort of guy that, yeah, it's just off. I thought that maybe he should be on a traditional Planequin, not on this mobile bit of masonry. Uh, again, think Xerxes in 300. It's the big dais being held up by slaves as opposed to a wagon being hauled by three armed ogres and that's something I don't like. I like symmetry. The 
ogres having like weird numbers of limbs and such doesn't work for me. Um, I don't mind the crab arms. That works. That's fine. Looks good. Um, but yeah, may maybe, maybe what it should have had instead of the ogres that I think would have looked better is like a slanesh minotaur taking that slangor and dying it up to the next level having a large slangor perhaps pulling this or several slangor pulling this might have worked better than these two big ogres because this this miniature has a lot going on um and i know people talk about busy and they say oh you know is busy bad busy is bad because you get visual overload and you're not really sure where to look at on a model to enjoy the model it's just like you're looking at it and going, well, there's a lot of model, because there is. And that, to me, is no good. I like fewer details on my models, but that's a personal bias. Again, that's not to hold Games Workshop accountable, because they haven't done anything bad. Um, but we all know what we like. And for me, personally, I like to have my miniatures a little bit dialed back. Just, that, just a little bit, like 5% back from what Games Workshop does. They always take it that step too far, which is, again, the peril of digital sculpting it's so easy to add stuff when you already have the assets sitting there that it tempts you into doing it when perhaps you shouldn't and you should just pull back a step you know this miniature probably started out with just the dais with just the fat guy on it and then judging from the shape of it i think they just slowly started they added like the little bow to it the little boat hull on the front there with the first person and then and they added on the little catamarans on the sides and added the two extra people and it just grew bigger and bigger and bigger. It was probably a lot smaller. It might have been just been the dais resting on the ground with him sitting on it originally because it looks like uh, it's all chipped and carved statuary that makes up the throne. Like it, it's got the, uh, I guess you'd call that the figure of maybe um, Prometheus. Okay, you know, he's being punished to hold the world aloft. Or is that Atlas? Oh, jeez, I'm forgetting my mythology. Uh, either way, you've got that person there, and they're trying to, to prop up this this marbled uh, effigy. And it looks like they're being carved out of the ground, but then, of course, it's a chariot. It's a strange design choice, especially because then on the back, you have a big one, like a reverse uh, figure off the prow of a ship hanging underneath and then it looks like there's some kind of boiler above that but then there's no one feeding the boiler above that i'm guessing it, it went through a lot of design decisions and just at some point the people in corporate just went yep that's it and they they just called it there and this is what we got and again don't hate it just things i would have preferred to be different um but that's personal bias personal taste creeping into it and um, I want to know what you think. Do you think they nailed the aesthetic? Or do you think it, maybe I'm onto something here. They, they, they got like 98% success. And then they just veered off by about 2% at the end. It doesn't spoil the range. But maybe, just maybe, they went a little bit far on this guy. And maybe they didn't hold to the themes. Or I'm just completely wrong. And that's fine too. I'm happy to be wrong. There's nothing bad about being wrong uh, i think people forget that it's just an opinion at the end of the day we all have them they're all like assholes everyone's got them anyway mac with the outer circle thank you all for watching and i'm also painting some uh slanesh and chaos dwarves at the moment which you'll see if you go on instagram among my other projects and i'm hoping to get more destroyer uh, company ultramarines done for later in the year and more events and of course i'll be hosting my own 30k event at the end of the year which yeah should be fun anyway thank you all for watching and see you all next time